Hey everybody, Austin here again with a Let's Play walkthrough. Uh, this time it's going to be Clay Fighter for the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is a fighting game released in 1993, developed by uh, Visual Concepts and uh, published by Interplay. And uh, this was a fun one back in the day. This is uh, probably one of the better wannabe fighting games of the early 90s uh, when Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2 just set the world on fire. And once those games hit in the arcades and became the Smash success as they were, everybody and their grandmother wanted to make a fighting game, uh, whether it was in the arcade or it was a home console exclusive. Uh, in the case of Clay Fighter, home console exclusive. Um, Clay Fighter is, again, probably one of the better ones from that time, uh, you know, as far as the wannabes go anyway. It's no Street Fighter 2, it's no Mortal Kombat, but you do have a wide character variety and each of those characters has a lot of different moves and whatnot. There was obviously a lot of care and effort put into this game. It's also got some really fun uh, humor to it. It's got some really great backgrounds as well. Uh, some of the gameplay can be a little janky, especially uh, in this day and age as of, you know, the time of me doing this video. But, um, you know, I had a good time going back to this game and sort of learning a couple of characters and, and trying to find a consistent route through the single player campaign. It's a very simple tournament style mode. It's just, you know, you go through the whole game, you fight all the characters, three characters, you actually fight more than once, which is kind of weird. Um, and then you fight a final boss, and then if you play on the highest difficulty, you'll actually get an end uh, an end screen. If you play on easy or medium, you don't get anything. It's just a credits roll. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. I'm going to be playing this game on hard mode so you guys can actually see the real ending for the character I'm going to play as. Um, and along the way, I'm going to talk about some basic strategies. Um, to hopefully make it so, you know, after you watch this video, you can go and maybe try to beat the game yourself. Uh, maybe have a slight, slightly better understanding of the game if you decide to try to tackle it. Now, there are two rules of thumb in this game if you're playing single player. Uh, it's for one, projectiles, 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 and then uh, anti-air standing kicks fierce kick. I'm going to be playing as bad Mr. Frosty, so for him it's basically his ice projectiles and then just his standing fierce kick. That'll take you through pretty much the entire game. Now you still have to play on your feet, you still have to sort of know what uh, what characters do what. Like some characters like Ikebod, uh, Clay, uh, and Taffy, they have a tendency of jumping around the screen much more often than say Blue Suede Goo uh, or Helga. And so uh, for certain characters, you'll want to know that, oh, I just have to wait, wait for them to jump, and then just anti-air them with the kick, and then, you know, I can just work my way through the game like that. So again, two rules of thumb. Um, we'll just kind of work our way through the game, and I'll just talk about those specific things for most of the playthrough, I'm sure. Uh, and I'll talk about other things and strategies that I might use, or some other, you know, gameplay mechanics along the way uh, as, as we make our way through this. Now, for those of you guys that have caught my most recent Let's Plays, uh, this is going to be a much more straightforward playthrough. There's not going to be a lot of cutting and editing and, and overlays and stuff like that so for those of you guys that really like the the recent playthroughs i've done um you know hopefully you still enjoy this one even though it's more of a back to basics playthrough um but with that let's go ahead and jump into it and um so when you start the game here you do actually have uh, a couple of options if you go to your options menu you do have your difficulty settings you've got game speed we're going to leave it on the uh default which is number one uh timer we're going to leave that on and then you can configure your, your controls as well. This is a six button game. It does use all the buttons on the uh, the Super Nintendo controller. And so with that, let's go ahead and hit start and go to start game. It's a very bare bones package, honestly, uh, especially if you decide to play the game on easy or medium, because, you know, you get to the end of the game and it's just a credits roll. There's, <laughs> it's just very anticlimactic. Um, so yeah, the package can feel very bare bones unless uh, you're playing it on hard, where you do get some extra content at the end. So there are uh, quite a few characters here, and there's lots of information for each character, which is pretty fun. Uh, but again, we're going to be playing as Bad Mr. Frosty. And uh, what I like about Bad Mr. Frosty, he's probably got uh, probably the most moves out of any character. At least it feels that way. I mean, he's got a shoulder slam. He's got uh, a snowball projectile. He's got a ground slide. He's got a... Um, uh, he could turn into a snowball and roll across the screen as well as go into the air. And then he's also got sort of this ice breath, which we're going to be using quite a lot in this playthrough. So again, two rules of thumb, projectiles and then anti-air. 
um, you know, standard moves that are anti-air. So his fierce kick right here. So if I let Helga jump in at me, I can just kick her like that and then uh, throw my projectiles at her. Now, one thing that's really nice about this version of the game is that um, when your special moves hit enemies, uh, a little phenomenon called chip damage uh, occurs. And uh, this is a very common thing in a lot of other fighting games, especially like Street Fighter, the Street Fighter series. Basically, if you do a special move, um, projectiles typically, when they... Um, you know, when they are blocked by your, your opponents, uh, your opponents will still take damage. And in Clay Fighter, they still take good damage, too. I mean, it's almost like hitting them normally without them even blocking it. Uh, it's kind of interesting. And um, so what I like to do is just constantly spam my projectiles and try to play the distance game if I can. So again, Bad Mr. Frosty has uh, multiple projectiles. If I do quarter circle forward and any punch button... Uh, he does this little snowball fist. He basically throws his fist out. And it does less damage than the Ice Breath, um, so I recommend doing the Ice Breath more often than not if you can. However, there are some benefits to doing uh, his hand projectile, the snowball hand. Um, so to do his Ice Breath, it's half circle forward, from back to forward. Uh, so where the uh, the little snowball hand is just quarter circle forward and then punch um, The ice breath is a full half circle forward and then punch Now if you want to do his ground slide you can do the same thing um, But press a, a kick button and he does that but it's it's very risky I don't recommend it and again what I recommend doing is trying to play You know the anti-air game like this so again Ikebod clay likes to jump in a lot and I can just do a standing fierce kick just like so and, uh, you know, sometimes if they end up jumping over my projectile, I can kick them into the projectile for a quick one-two combo. And those that's pretty much, you know, the only moment in the game, at least for me with Bad Mr. Frosty, that I'll actually be able to combo enemies. It's pretty much guaranteed. Uh, I throw a projectile out, I do the anti-air kick, they land into the projectile, and then, you know, they, they take a second hit, which is nice, which maximizes my damage. Now, I've seen some long plays of this game where people like to get up close to the enemies. I don't, I honestly don't recommend it if you're trying to get through this game consistently. Uh, the problem is, is that the AI in this game, they can get very aggressive when you're right in front of them. And uh, when that happens, they can just, they can do a ton of damage just back to back. And before you know it, you know, in three hits, like three quarters of your health is gone. Some of these, some of the AI here, uh, some of these opponents are extremely dangerous uh, up close. And look at that, I just blocked his attack. He still did a big chunk of damage here. I'm kind of waiting for him to jump, but he's not jumping, so I gotta get some of my pro projectiles going. And there we go. I went ahead and did a weak punch. Uh, it is good to know what your attacks are with the, you know, the six different buttons. So you've got weak punch, medium punch, fierce punch. Weak kick, medium kick, fierce kick. It's good to know what they are. And if you do have an enemy right in front of you, uh, if you want to have higher priority over whatever they're doing, you want to, kind of like in Street Fighter, you want to focus on weak attacks if you're right in front of them. Uh, I don't really recommend heavy attacks right in front of them simply because uh, they take longer to come out. And it's very likely that uh, one of these enemies will... Uh, override your, you know, your fierce attacks with one of their specials. And Taffy in particular, he hits like a tank. Uh, he'll do multiple hits back to back. Before you know it, half your health bar is gone, uh, you know, in one move. It, he's very, very dangerous. There are a couple characters in this game that are just insanely dangerous. Um, I really feel like, uh, you know, this game isn't balanced very well. Some characters feel way more overpowered than others. Um, Tiny is another character, at least when it comes to the single player campaign, when I'm playing by myself, Tiny feels like he's way overpowered. I mean, he is a big dude, obviously, but uh, you'll kind of see what I mean once we get there. There's a, there's a very good chance we'll have to get a game over and then continue. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. I'd love to get myself a one credit clear on this. Um, but I will admit, I didn't practice this game a lot. I think I beat this game uh, about three times, uh, a couple times on medium, and then I did it once on hard just to see if I could even do it. Uh, originally, I was going to do this Let's Play on medium, um, but then I was like, man, this can't be, you know, the whole game. Like, there's got to be an ending sequence, right? So I went and looked for long plays on YouTube, and I was able to find one that was a hard mode long play, uh, which confirmed that, yes, there is an ending. So, so because of that, I went ahead and decided to try to, you know, beat hard mode myself. And I was able to my first try, which was good. It's honestly not that much different from medium. Uh, the enemies can be a little more aggressive. 
but overall it's not that bad. Uh, so if you want the ending, definitely play it on hard mode. So Bonkers, another one of those jumpy characters, he just likes to jump all the time. But again, he's just like Taffy, he's got some moves that just go straight across the screen. I mean, that's like every character in the game, right? <laughs> but he's got some moves where he's like Taffy and he spins around like that, he does that cartwheel. Uh, that can do just a ton of damage. One other thing you'll notice in this is that enemies can uh, become dizzy, but they come out of the dizzy instantly. Like, if you see them go dizzy, don't even bother going for them unless you're already right in front of them. Um, if you're across the screen, do not go for them. This is not Street Fighter 2. Uh, so this move right here, you can actually do by holding back and then pressing forward and punch. And, and uh, Bad Mr. Frosty would do that uh, snowball move along the ground. You can also do it up into the air. Um... And uh, I, I don't really, uh, I don't really recommend it. And actually, now that I think about it, I think it's kick. I think you do kick with it, uh, and, and it'll happen. No, it's uh, it's punch. It's it's so weird. Uh, when you play this game, what you're gonna find is that it likes to buffer your inputs a long time. So imagine like there being like a highway of uh, controller inputs. Uh, and this highway is always clogged up. It's like it's rush hour at all times. Um, and basically what ends up happening is moves that you did inputs for like like two seconds ago, um, you know, will end up coming out because those moves are, or those inputs are still in the queue. Even though you actually did something else on the, on the D-pad afterwards, say like you wanted to just throw a standard projectile, but instead you end up doing his snowball along the ground move. Uh, it's because of how the game just buffers those inputs and how it how it takes them It's like it stores them in a queue and they, it leaves them there for a little bit almost like Dark Souls For those of you guys that have played Dark Souls, it's it's a lot like that actually uh, and It can be a little aggravating. So whenever you see me doing uh, his snowball move on on the ground I don't usually want to be doing that because it puts me right in front of the enemy and they're gonna always block it Mostly they're gonna block it anyway um and they, and, you know, when they block it, my character just kind of, you know, comes up and I'm just right in striking distance and, you know, they can get some free hits on me and I don't want that to happen. Um, so speaking of Tiny, uh, this is uh, Tiny's level and, uh, yeah, it's the Coliseum. And uh, so what I like to do with Tiny is try to use my regular projectiles and then just do standing kicks. Again, really good rule of thumb, standing kick, just like that. And then do my projectile, just like so. I'm trying to limit the amount of times I say just like so, because I have a feeling some of you guys made a drinking game out of it last time uh, I did a Let's Play. <laughs> My Mega Man Let's Play, I think I said let's, uh, just like so, like, at least 20 times over the course of the playthrough. It was really bad. I didn't realize how many times I said it until I went to edit the video, and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and do my ice breath. There we go. Good first fight. Tiny, for me, is probably the hardest character in the game. At least this version of the game. Don't even get me started on the Genesis version. I'll talk about differences uh, with that one later. Uh, there, are some, there are some big differences with that one that make it a hell of a lot harder to play. So again, anti-air with my kick, just like that. And uh, notice I said just like that, not just like so. <laughs> I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. There we go. See, that was a quick 1-2 one, one, uh, combo there, which is nice. So you can see why I like to just do the anti-air. And if I already have a projectile out, um, you know, a lot of times they'll just land right on top of that. All right, there we go. We got it. Awesome. We didn't even die once. That's great. Yeah, we're going to have to fight Tiny again. He's actually one of three characters you have to fight twice. I don't know why you have to fight them twice. Maybe they were originally trying to have three characters like on some of these levels that didn't make it into the game. Um, and they left the stages, but, uh, you know, so they had to, they had to fill in the levels. Uh, for the the single player campaign. I don't know. I'm just speculating. I have no idea. I don't I do not know the history of Clay Fighter. If anyone out there does, uh, especially if like an old developer stumbles upon this video, I I would love to hear more. Um so yeah, Blue Suede Goo here. Uh he does a little bit of jumping in at you like this, uh, but a lot of times you can also just sit back and just throw projectiles as well. And uh Yeah. You can just block whatever projectiles he throws at you as well. And that was accidental. I did not mean to jump. I think that was just a controller issue right there. Um, I am actually playing this on a Mr. FPGA, much like we do with my Mega Man DOS Let's Play. Uh, and so we're not actually using a Super Nintendo controller. We're actually using one of the RetroBit wired Saturn replica controllers, which is an amazing controller. 
Uh, it's kind of my go-to controller, that and a PS1 Classic controller uh, when I use the Mister. Uh, they're both fantastic controllers. And uh, for those of you guys that have used a Saturn Model 2 controller, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a really excellent controller. And he's just landing on these projectiles left and right. I am completely okay with that. And it's, the humor in this game is pretty funny, I will admit. Um, I really do enjoy it. Uh, like, uh, Blue Sway Goo uses his hair attack. He goes, hey man, watch the hair. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, what I really like about the original Clay Fighter is, like, it doesn't seem to take itself too seriously. Like, it kind of plays it straight, but it's also not... Maybe not too seriously is, is the right term, but... Some of the later Clay Fighters, if you go and you look at Clay Fighter Tournament Edition, which was like a modified version of this, they went and like redid all the backgrounds and stuff like that, and they look super creepy and just messed up. And um, this is just like nice and cartoonish. It, it's it's just fun. Um, but the Clay Fighters after this, just they became creepy, honestly. <laughs> like, like this is pretty fun. It, it's cool, in my opinion. Lots of creativity and whatnot, but... Clay Fighter Terminate, Tournament Edition, Clay Fighter uh, 63 and a third on N64, and then uh, C2 Judgment Clay on Super Nintendo. They were just all oh, super creepy. If you just look at those games, you're like, man, what were the developers smoking when they made these? Um, but the original Clay Fighter, I think, has a lot of charm to it. Uh, you could definitely tell there were good intentions here. <laughs> good intentions do not always make a uh, great game, but... Uh, yeah, some of the, the the other Clay Fighter games are really questionable in design. So come on, Taffy, jump. Jump at me, Taffy. Or oh, that works too. So just look at how much damage he does too. Okay, just... Okay! I couldn't do anything about that. So my mistake there was uh, not doing enough projectiles. I just sort of turtled in the corner. And Taffy in particular just gets really aggressive with his his uh, his special attacks. He'll just keep pounding you. Now some characters like Taffy and uh, you know Tiny in particular as well. They they'll usually jump right from the very beginning, and so you can at least get a good start on your fights, where you know you just get a bunch of free kicks, which is which is pretty awesome. But look at that! I blocked that attack, and it did uh, like almost a fifth of my health bar. It's just ridiculous how much chip damage there is in this game. Now one thing that's really interesting is if you play the Sega Genesis version, there is zero chip damage. Um, which makes the game a hell of a lot harder because you can projectile spam all day long They're gonna block all of them and not take any damage from it zero damage It's not like primal rage or street fighter 2 or clay fighter super nintendo where you know They do still take a, a little bit of damage uh, So even if someone blocks your attacks in those games You still feel like you're making progress in their health bar, but in Genesis clay fighter, uh-uh yeah, you've got to be uh, that game is super difficult. I actually one thing that got me to Want to do a let's play of this game is that I had fired up both versions of clay fighter to potentially do a dual play or a side-by-side -side long play uh, Which I'm gonna be trying to do more of in the near future uh, And I wasn't able to well not yet. I'm gonna have to it's a long story But let's just say I tried playing the Genesis version after beating the Super Nintendo one and I think I had to continue on every single character in the game. I did end up beating the game, but it was embarrassing. <laughs> uh, the game is that much harder because of a, a few key differences, so... I think the enemy AI in the Genesis one's also more aggressive. Uh, not as much random jumping, so it's harder to just anti-air enemies in the Genesis one. All right. Ooh, nice little one-two hit there. All right, just anti-air and just rinse and repeat. For Bad Mr. Frosty, I do recommend uh, constantly doing projectiles because he's got a lot of attacks that are, you know, he just pushes forward really fast. And uh, if you're just sitting there trying to do regular attacks, they're going to override your regular attacks. Uh, so you really want to just keep pummeling him with projectiles. And what I really like about Bad Mr. Frosty's uh, freeze attack, or, or ice breath, I should say, is that it's got a really big hitbox, and it's difficult for some characters to go underneath it. Now, some characters, like the Blob, you know, they'll have moves where they can actually slide underneath it. Um, but this, this hitbox is so big, it's difficult for them to do that. So, when it comes to his projectiles, I recommend doing the ice breath more than the, uh, the fist. 
And this is actually bad. Double KO! Alright, so neither one of us win, so we have to actually do that match again, which is, I'm fine with that. So let's go ahead and do that again. Alright, jump, anti-air, just like so. Uh-oh, I said it. Jump again, do a projectile. More projectiles, anti-air, nice, little 1-2 one, one, hit, a 1-2 combo. Again, his ice breath, his ice breath is just, it's, mm, it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. Now, on that uh, score tally there, you can actually press some buttons to actually skip through it faster, or cycle through it faster, otherwise it takes a little while to, to calculate. Alright, so this is the Blob. He's probably one of the most aggressive characters in the game, man, especially if you're playing the Genesis version of this. So again, I'm gonna just try to do, you know, anti-air, and then projectiles all day long. Just keep doing it. Even if he blocks it, it's totally okay because chip damage. You know, whenever they block it, I'm still making progress. Now, the Blob apparently uh, has this, he's got this buzzsaw attack. It's like back for two seconds and then uh, it's like doing a sonic boom with Guile in Street Fighter. Um, if you apparently keep holding forward with it, he'll end up hitting the, the opponent like six or seven times. And it turns out that the block damage is actually greater than if you had to just hit the end of your opponent normally. It's super broken. Um, which is why I, I, I mentioned earlier, I don't think this game was balanced all that well. I don't think a whole lot of thought was put into it. Um, now, Clay Fighter uh, Tournament Edition for Super Nintendo actually has some, uh, some balance changes, and I couldn't do anything about that. Yeah, it has some balance changes. Uh, I think the Blob even lost a move based on uh, some information I read. There's like a Clay Fighter wiki out there. Of all things, there's a Clay Fighter wiki. <laughs> there's a wiki for everything these days, I guess. Um, but yeah, interesting stuff. So, I probably won't ever do a Let's Play of Tournament Edition, but I do. I would like to do a, uh, a Super Nintendo fighting variety stream sometime, and I think that would be a lot of fun. And that would give me an excuse to play Tournament Edition. That would be uh, pretty cool. Okay, getting lucky with these projectile hits, thankfully. And I couldn't do anything about that, and... Oh my god, there we go, game over. Yeah, that's awful. Game over. Let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, when he did that buzzsaw attack, it just, it did so much health. And then what sucks is like he, he, when he comes back into his regular form, he's just like right there on top of me and he just keeps attacking. It's, it's very unfair. Um, yeah, like I said, this game's got some jank to it that makes it not the most enjoyable thing to play. I mean, I still have fun with it. Uh, and I do think this game is is probably better played. Look at that. Look at that. That is ridiculous. This game is better played with a human being. Um, especially if both of, both of you are playing as the Blob. <laughs> the Blob is a, a very unbalanced character, which is way overpowered. Yeah, getting him on the other side of the screen is really good because you know, that's the most distance between him and I, which means even if he does his buzzsaw attack, I can get a projectile out before he actually touches me. And thankfully, my projectiles will override his buzzsaw, which is good. Now, I'm doing a shoulder slam completely by accident because of how the game buffers my inputs. Uh, so again, you know, if you play constant projectiles like I do, you're gonna eventually find yourself doing stuff by accident. And it's not really anything you can do about, you know? It's just, it's just, it is what it is. Well, oh, I was trying to punch, and of course, you know, the attacks come out really slow, so I wasn't able to. Man, this is rough. Getting our asses handed to us by the blob. Alright, anti-air. Try it again. Jump, anti-air. Oops, see, I was trying to do a projectile, but because I was holding back, uh, it thought that I was trying to do a charge move, even though I did the rotation and everything. Again, same thing happened. I mean, it's working out for me. This is not working out for me. <laughs> Look at that damage! It is ridiculous, man. It is so stupid. Oh, man. I mean, it's just, it's just dumb. That is just dumb. 
Well, so much for a, a one credit clear in this game, and we only have two more stages after this. Well, technically three. Uh, we have to fight Tiny and then uh, Bonker again, or whatever his name is, the clown. Um, so let's try this again. Hopefully, uh, third time's the charm. But, you know, what's what's good about this is uh, this can show you how quickly a run can go downhill in this game. So if you're the kind of person that prides yourself on getting a big score or getting a one credit clear, um, you know, some people are really all about that. Um, you know, this is how a run can go downhill instantly. And his slide move, that actually goes underneath, I think, all my projectiles with Bad Mr. Frosty. Um, so you, if, you, if I do a projectile and he does that move, we'll... we'll will usually end up trading hits. Um, and I think his attack actually ends up doing more damage than mine does. So you do have to watch out for that when you're playing against the blob. And we just traded hits there as well. See, look at that. Look at how fast he is. And this is a lot of characters in the game. Um, they just start doing chains of specials back and forth, back and forth. And I don't even know if it's possible to do it like that as a human player. I haven't tried being that aggressive. Uh, simply because, like, uh... I don't know, I feel like it's not worth the risk. And what's funny is, like, almost everything he does is, is a special, and so I take chip damage. So, regular, normal moves, uh... You know, like your standard punches and your standard kicks and whatnot. They do not uh, do chip damage. So, you know, where something like Primal Rage, even your normal punches and kicks will do chip damage. That, it doesn't work like that in, in Clay Fighter. Only special moves. Basically, command moves where quarter circle forward, punch. You know, the, you unleash a projectile, that projectile does chip damage. But if I walk up to him and just kick him with a fierce kick, it doesn't do anything. So, it's another reason why I don't like getting in front of them and just trying to pummel them with regular attacks because... It puts me at risk, and it doesn't do anything, you know? All it does is just put me at risk. So I'd rather play the distance game, do anti-airs and things like that. And, uh, you know, play safe, basically. Hey, look at that! Now in, uh, Clay Fighter Tournament Edition, if you beat a match, or you complete a match without taking any damage, uh, it actually has a little call-out for that, um, which is kind of neat. It doesn't look like they have that in uh, this version of the game. Uh, Clay Fighter Tournament Edition, I also found out, also has a, a new introduction sequence. There is no introduction sequence in this game, unfortunately. Um, and it's actually a, a pretty funny intro sequence. I, I actually really want to fire it up just to show you guys. But like I said, I'll probably play it on a, a live stream sometime in the, probably the near future. I'll probably do an SNES fighting game variety stream in the uh, the near future. Actually, you know what? I just realized maybe I did take a hit in that first round. I wasn't paying attention. Um, I was looking at my health bar in a different direction. All right, there we go. Whew. Almost lost that one or lost a round. But yeah, Tournament Edition also, it alters a lot of the background, so whereas, like, you know, Helga's stage on this has that boat in the background, it's hand-drawn in this one, whereas in, in Tournament Edition, um, they pre-rendered it, and it looks so ugly. Um, on Bonkers level, there are these, like, really creepy-ass clowns in the background, like these huge clown faces. You can see them here. There's a big clown face in the background, right? But it's colorized in a way to where... I mean, it looks kind of creepy now that I think about it, but it looks disgusting in Tournament Edition. Um, not really sure why they thought that was a good idea. Uh, for those of you guys that are curious about it, just go look up a long play of Tournament Edition. You, you'll see exactly what I mean. Blue Suede glue, uh, Goose level? It's just this, like, up close of blue, uh, Blue's face. And he's like... He looks like he's cracked out or something. Oh, it looks so creepy. Just go pull up a long play of Tournament Edition to see what I'm talking about. It, it is it is pretty ridiculous. All right, so all we have to do is just uh, kill him one more time. And again, anti-air preferably. And then uh, we get to go to the final boss. And the final boss is ridiculously easy in this version of the game. Uh, much, much harder in the Genesis version. And I'll show you why he's easy in this one. It's basically just anti-air, you know, standing fierce kick all day long on the on the final boss fight. Just kind of like I'm doing right now. I mean, if he's going to keep jumping like this, then I'm going to just roll with it, right? Even if I trade hits, uh, it's still fine. 
I only trade hits like fairly, I don't, not not that often, honestly. So, you know, I can get a lot of free anti-airs. Um, yeah, it's basically free. <laughs> That's why I like to play with this strategy. It's free, you know? If I just want to go through the game and not have to continue over and over, you know, playing like this is really good. And so, yeah, I'm not even going to bother with, uh, you know, special projectiles or anything. I'm just going to wait for him to jump. And then you'll notice that my kick actually will do two hits as well. It actually hits high and then it hits low. So while I was only getting one hit on the uh, the other opponents because I was using it as an anti-air, if I do it just right here, I can actually get a second hit as well, which does even more damage. So I'm just holding back because he does constantly shoot up projectiles from other characters. You'll see Bad Mr. Frosty's, you know, Snowball Fist is in there. Uh, Bonkers Pie Attack is in there. And, uh... Yeah, so you just want to watch out for those. You don't want to be constantly holding forward because he does throw those out uh, and they will do damage very quickly. But, you know, the, it, <laughs> you just literally wait. That's it. He always jumps. He doesn't stop jumping. It's really weird. In the Genesis version, uh, he is much more nuanced. Like, he still jumps every now and then, but, you know, a lot of times he'll just move forward and backwards without jumping. And this one, he's just jumping all the time, even on hard mode. Um, so, I mean, this is really as hard as he gets. So, you know, not a very difficult final boss, at least with Bad Mr. Frosty, with some other characters they might not have as, you know, many convenient anti-air attacks. Um, but with Bad Mr. Frosty, just sit there, press Fierce Kick, um, and, uh, yeah. So this is the ending you get. You don't even get this part on medium. So, yeah, it's cool that we got to finish this on hard mode. It doesn't require you to get like a one credit clear or anything like that. We continued a couple times, um, but we were still able to get the ending. So as bad Mr. Frosty became king of the circus, he moved the big top to his beloved home, the North Pole. The attractions forced a certain overweight toy maker and his reindeer out of a job. Kids now look forward to Christmas from bad Mr. Frosty. The end. <laughs> See, like I said, I, I like some of the humor in this game. Like, he kicks Santa Claus out of the North Pole, and and kids look forward to him at Christmas now. It's, it's pretty funny, so. But yeah, guys, that is a Clay Fighter for the Super Nintendo. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. I know it was a, a little bit different from my my typical Let's Plays uh, as, of, as of late, um, but I haven't actually done a fighting game Let's Play in a long time. I think it's it's been years since I've done a fighting game Let's Play. The last one I did might have been like Street Fighter Alpha 2 on Super Nintendo, maybe Tekken 3 or Guilty Gear on PS1, but I don't think I've done a fighting game since then. That was like 2017 or 2018, so... But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this mix-up. Um, like I said, uh, Clay Fighter does have uh, a good amount of jank to it, uh, unfortunately, but... Uh, of the wannabe fighting games, of the early 90s fighting game craze, uh... You know, it was still pretty solid for the time. Uh, I remember enjoying this quite a bit growing up as a kid. Uh, one of my best friends had rented it and brought it over right after release, and we just binged it, and it was it was a lot of fun. Um, there is there are a, a lot of creative enemies and uh, backgrounds and moves and stuff like that in this game. Um, I do wish the hand to hand combat was um, a little more streamlined, a little bit smoother, like Street Fighter. Um, that's probably the game's biggest fault. Like, it's got good projectiles and special moves and stuff like that. Um, but how, like, you know, just punching and kicking works, it doesn't feel all that satisfying. And it's difficult to do, like, a punch and link it into a projectile. You know, it doesn't have much in the way of combos. Now, if I remember correctly, that was actually changed later on, especially in, like, 63 and 3rd, where I think they added a combo system in that game. They actually, you know, spout off the amount of hits you get and, and, and everything, because combos were all the rage in the mid-90s. Um, so, um, but, I mean, if you want to learn the game, uh, it's actually not that hard to do so. If you, you know, go by those two rules of thumb that I mentioned, basically projectiles and then anti-air, just standing normal attacks, um, you know, Fierce Kick in particular with Bad Mr. Frosty. You'll have to experiment with other characters and see if any of them have sort of an anti-air normal move. Um, yeah, if, if you just play like that, you wait for enemies to jump in, and when they're not jumping in, you just spam projectiles, and then hope for the best, you'll probably be good to go. Um, it is still fun. It's still fun, and it's fun going through the game, seeing all the, like, the, the wacky backgrounds and things like that, and uh, yeah, just kind of going through the game.
it's a fun game. I bet in this day and age, it would still be a lot more fun playing with an actual human being. And I would actually like to do that sometime, but alas, I have no friends, so. <sighs> but yeah, um, I'm sure it would be a hell of a lot more fun with a human being. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, there's good old Brian Fargo, longtime industry vet. And uh, oh, good old Interplay. I miss I miss classic Interplay. They they released so many fun games back in the day. Uh, they're actually probably one of my favorite publishers from back then. You know, outside the usual Japanese publishers like your Konami and Nintendo and Capcom and, and whatnot. Uh, when it came to Western stuff, Interplay was definitely one of my favorites, if not my favorite. I mean, I love id Software, but I mean, they only did a few games, whereas Interplay published just like boatloads of games. So much, so much fun stuff by them. Clay Fighter, Out of This World, Descent. Um, I could rattle off a whole bunch of other games that I like by them. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. Uh, as always, if you're new to this channel and you liked what you saw here, please uh, click that subscribe button. Get subbed. Uh, this is what my content's like pretty much for here on out. Um, you know, this Let's Play format. Uh, my my normal platformers and shmups and stuff like that, they'll have more editing. Uh, these fighting games are a lot more basic to explain. So, you know, not much fancy editing here. But if you enjoyed it, nonetheless, yeah, please subscribe. And uh, feel free to check out my back catalog as well. For everybody already subbed, thank you as always for your continued support. And uh, I guess until the next one, take it easy.